Hello there and welcome to day 89 in 100 days of believing bigger. Now before I get started, I just want you to know that uh, life is life in, all right? So <laughs> let me read this devotional. And, and now while I haven't been, um, if you notice any you know time discrepancies, I haven't been posting that I'm reading this devotional because I'm assigned to like do it on camera, but I have been reading a devotional so I'm not skipping my time with God um, but I just have not been in this devotional because I have been in no shape form or means had the capacity or whatever to get in front of to just hit the button sometimes I'm just not waking up halfway ain't got no clothes on on the flow crawling to Jesus with the nearest devotional I could find. So just want you to know that I'm trying to stick to my assignment with this specific devotional to share with you. So here we go. Day 89, unashamed acceptance. God selected the common and the cast off for whatever lacks status so that he could invalidate the claims of those who think those things are significant. This is 1 Corinthians 1 and 28. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I wanna hear the regular version of this. So I'm gonna pull out my Bible. <clears throat> I know you probably haven't seen me uh, do this, but I'm gonna pull out my my Bible. And y'all, I'm one of them that's, I'm not gonna flip through the pages, baby. That's what the, t the uh, table of contents is for. Just tell me what pages are. First Corinthians. Okay, that's on page 1068. That's all I need to know. Because you've been flipped and missed the whole thing. All right, here we go. 1 and 28. And this is in the New International Version. And it reads, God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. Okay, so let me go back to the voice version. God selected the common and the cast off, whatever lacks status, lowly, so he could invalidate the claims of those who think those things are significant so that no one may boast before him. Let me see, to nullify the things that are, okay. So whether we are stay-at-home mothers, career women, in school, dealing with illness, recovering from divorce, or just trying to find confidence, something causes all of us to ask the question, will God actually use me? Given my circumstances, given how things look or appear, and given who I've been and how others perceive and rely upon me, excuse me, I, could God actually reinvent and use me for something glorious and new? Self-doubt has a clear mission. Yes, it does which is to prevent you from stepping boldly into your mission. It wants to shrink your borders, bury your brilliance, and cripple your courage needed, and cripple the courage needed to be a living ripple effector on the earth. That's what I want to be. I highlight it. I want to be a ripple effector. A living ripple effector on earth. Okay, destiny is a call to boldness. Service to the king and kingdom building happens when we embrace boldness and commit to building others. That's true leadership. So here's the deal. Saying yes to your higher purpose isn't going to be easy. Hmm. Anything worth having is worth believing in. And believing in God isn't enough if you don't believe that. In him, you are more than enough too. Believing in God isn't enough. If you don't believe that in him, you are more than enough too. The key is to remember this. An unashamed woman is an unstoppable woman. Ooh, that's good. God will use you in a greater way when you stop being ashamed of your calling. It's time to release your timidness and regrets and trade them for Trade them in for resolve and readiness. Trade them in for resolve and readiness. All right. Holy Ghost. Unashamed acceptance. Come on. So. I'm not sure 
where the struggle of shame comes from. No, I do not. Um, but not it's not necessarily for me. My level of shame does not necessarily come from my circumstances where I came from. You know, I don't have a tragic story. Things tragic and traumatic have happened to me, but they are not who I am. So half of that stuff I don't even remember because I have put it on the shelf, pulled it off the shelf for therapy, and then now it's back. Hopefully it's buried and the roots are gone. Um, so that's not necessarily my circumstance. Um, and then other circumstances that may come up is like, you know, being educationally qualified or doing something they've done before, things like that that make you self-doubt. Um, but for me, shame has come from what other people have said about me. And it's not even that I should care. Like, I know this, that I should not care. Um, but it's something intrinsically inside of me that makes me slow down and think through. And that comes from being a planner. That comes from being a woman. When we, when we are women, we think of the right now and then we think beyond the right now. Okay. So we're planning and trying to anticipate any holes in what we're going to do. And one of those holes, this is good, Holy Ghost. One of those holes is what somebody is going to say for me. Um, but self-doubt wants me to shrink my borders. And I can pray and say, God, enlarge my territory, right? Because that's him expanding my borders. But self-doubt will come in and say, <clears throat> no, I want to shrink your borders. You're only good enough for this little space. You're only good enough for this rate, um, this amount of pay. You're just here. So self-doubt wants to shrink your borders and bury your brilliance and cripple the courage needed to be a living ripple effector on the earth. That living ripple effector has been my desire. I just want to do things that create an impact that's going to ripple in the world meaning that what one person receives they can now go and because of where it started it can ripple out into the world even more that's one of the reasons why i even started therapy like i want to create healthy habits healthy communication um behaviors healthy response behaviors in my family so that it ripples down to my children so it ripples down to their children so it ripples down um, and it can be a generational blessing and not toxic toxicity being a generational curse. So I love that living. All I see is like the ripples. Like when you have a, 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 a pool, Ooh, I sound like a preacher. Uh, 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 uh. When you have a pool of sitting water and you drop something in it and you can see the ripples of that from the center of where you drop something and it ripples out into that water. That's what I see. Okay. Service to the king and kingdom building happens when we embrace boldness and commit to building others up. Listen, embrace boldness, meaning for me, let boldness in. Let it live the same way fear has a room. Sometimes fear does have a room. That's why God told us 365 times in the Bible. I think it's 365. Um, do not fear. Do not be afraid. He then told us that 365 times, one for every day of the year. Fear has a room, but I want my boldness to have a, not just a room. I want it to have a master suite in my life. Holy Ghost, this is good. I want boldness to have a master suite in my life. And the commitment to build others up, I am learning in this season that it is also a commitment to be okay with seasons of depletion. Be okay with seasons of unrest because when you're building something that takes energy, like in, in the natural, that takes energy when you are building something. It's funny because my husband is literally building um, a patio and, and um, booths for his new restaurant and he comes home and he is physically tired. His body is stretched. His body is um, 
roaring, it's popping. You know, he got bones popping over here and they rub my arms, you know, because he, he's being stretched, his muscles are being flexed, right? So when you commit to building others, come on, I'm talking to myself. When I'm committing to building others and to be of service of the kingdom, I have to be okay that I am going to need replenishing. I'm going to need refreshing. I am not always going to have 1000% to pick the hammer and the nails up to build. Come on. This is good. Okay. And the little line after that says that's true leadership. Committing to building others up is true leadership. I can commit to build and when I need rest, I don't have to feel guilty about it because it's a natural process. It is a natural process that when I am using my energy to build something, I need the energy to refresh myself. Okay. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm extended. Okay. Uh, saying yes to your higher purpose is not going to be easy. <clears throat> More than anything, it's not going to be easy. A couple of things. Let me take that back. More than anything, it's not going to be easy. The fact that y'all can see this mic is taking me down. I feel so local. But anyway, it's not going to be easy because of the mind, the battle of the mind, the battle of the mind, the battle of the mind. Um, I was talking to my sister this morning and shout out to Rosalind Renee, you guys, if you listen to podcasts, then definitely check out therapy as a Christian podcast. It is going to bless your life. Okay. But I was talking to my sister this morning and she said in this season, you have not like, you haven't been working on your mindset for you to get to this point and give up. I ain't trying to cry, but she said, you haven't been working so hard on your mindset to get to this point to give up. But the enemy wants to attack your mind because he knows that if he can get there, then he can get everywhere else. And when I tell y'all in this season, I know that you should let God fight your battles, but you have to participate. Like you are on the team with him. Like you are a warrior too. Okay. Um, that song, I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. That's for real. Because it's really not even sometimes about fighting for fighting against the devil. It's fighting to keep your faith. To You're fighting to stay on the Lord's side. Okay. Um, so that can be challenging. So when you are saying yes to higher purpose, the enemy doesn't like that. If you were a nobody. Okay. If you didn't have power, if you didn't have a a living ripple effect in the world, then he wouldn't touch you. He wouldn't bother you. But because you are valuable to the kingdom, because I am valuable to the kingdom, because I am, I got something to say. I got something inside of me that needs to come out and the Lord, the Lord knows it. The enemy knows it. Then that makes this thing not easy. Okay. Amongst other things. Let me move on. Because I'm really talking to me. Um, the key is to remember this. An unashamed woman is an unstoppable woman. It don't matter if you're doing it for God's glory or you're doing it for your own. <clears throat> there are people in this world who are unashamed. And they should be shamed. But they not ashamed. And they are unstoppable. I'm just going to throw it out there. The Kardashians. What Kris Jenner does. She does it without shame. The whole situation about Ray J and them putting it sex tape together. The whole, like the whole, the, the, the lack of morale and just I don't know she she does that stuff unashamed I don't care what nobody says she puts it out there and she is unashamed and you know what the world says about Kris Jenner she's unstoppable because she has made her children 
rich. Now, I'm not saying that, um, you know, I don't know her life. I, I just know mine. But I just, I just wonder what would happen if me, with my intention to please my father, if I was unashamed, how much he can explode and blow my mind with blessings. How much he can magnify in the world his glory on a capacity that the Kardashians could never, could never experience. That might sound strange. Yeah, honestly, it might not make sense, but it makes sense to me. I want to be an unashamed woman for God. Okay? Because I want to be unstoppable. All right. God will use you in a greater way when you, you stop being ashamed of your calling. Um, let me go back to my little version of shame. My shame come from people who like, oh my God, you so deep. You, you, you deep, 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 deep. And it just comes with so much shame. Yes, I am deep. I think about things on a way deeper level. I'm not on the surface. Sometimes jokes don't be jokes to me. It don't. It don't be joking. Funny again, me and Rosalind was on the phone this morning and... She was like, I love you to life, nigga. I'm like, see, that's why you my nigga. <laughs> because you love me to life and not death. Those words are powerful. We said we're going to ride. She said, I'm. we're going to ride and live this thing out. Not ride and die. Those words are so powerful. So, yes, I am deep on that level. And I remember watching a devotional when Kiera Shear used to do her morning devotionals. I was watching it, and she was like, Watch your words. And that was one of the exact things she talked about. She even included, you know, when people say killing myself laughing, uh, texting the skulls, you know, when you let that kind of stuff, like putting those things out into the atmosphere. And yes, it does seem deep, but that's where, for me, that's just who I am. I don't want to be ashamed of how I approach things, how I see things, my perspective on things, but I'm, work, I'm still working through that. I'm still working through that. And it ain't even about what the world has said. It's about people in my world. Even though they are not trying to harm me, they are, they are putting speed bumps in my journey because I'm thinking about what they're saying because they're the closest to my ears. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, when I say this in conversation, their response to it. Not necessarily what, you know, what effects are going to happen after this, the benefits of me walking into my calling. So, sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. So, <laughs> It's time to release your timidness and regrets and trade them in for resolve and readiness. Resolve and readiness. Trade them in for resolve. Uh, I'm going to look that word up. Trade them in for resolve. I'm going to just highlight to look that word up. So if you are on day 89, look up, look up the definition of that word too. Um, resolve and readiness. All right, where do you feel God guiding you to lead next? That is the question of the day. Where do you feel God guiding you to lead next? So he led me here. Um, he definitely led me here. Um, my next level of leadership, I believe, is through a an in-person live event. Um, I'm really excited about it. It won't be the first time that I've done it. It'll probably be the fourth, fifth time. Well, probably more than that. I don't host a lot of live events, but one to this magnitude. So he's leading me that direction and he's leading me to speak more. Um, he is leading me to um, get on more stages. I can just see it. 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 Uh, internally, he is leading me into a place of humility right now. Um, different story for a different day. But that's why I feel like he leading me. All right, let's go to the prayer. Now, you think about that too on your own. Journal it down, however you want to do it. All right, 
prayer. Lord, you've built me for bold adventures. Help me not to waste time questioning my worth and readiness and to instead maximize my God-given magnificence. Amen. You've built me for bold adventures. You built me for bold adventures. When I think about a bold adventure, I'm thinking about like a hike. That's bold of me. To climb a mountain with a rope and trek the the mountains, that is bold for me. Um, Zip lining, you know, across a jungle, bold. Jumping out of an airplane, bold. Those are bold adventures, right? So for that, what do I need? I need mental capacity. I need the courage to do something even when I'm shaking in my boots, even when my legs are giving out and I'm climbing so that I can even get to the zip line part, you know, even in the heat, I need, I need some air. I need water for hydration. You know, I need those things. So if you built me for bold adventures, that may not have it. God is really on my side today reading this. Um, help me not to waste time questioning my, questioning my worth. How much time have you wasted? How much time have I wasted questioning? Not even questioning, but being frozen, Ilsa. Being frozen, questioning in, in my shame and in, in readiness. How can I maximize my, and that's been my faith this week is to re-energize my prayer. This week has been to re-energize my faith, um, refuel my faith so I can move. But man, this is good. Okay, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Father God, we just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for this word. Thank you so much, God, that you have built us for bold adventures. I thank you so much that no matter our circumstances, God, that you have a clear mission, even though self-doubt has a clear mission to to shrink our borders and bury our brilliance and cripple our courage. You have a clear mission to enlarge our territory, God, to shine light on our brilliance and God, to boost our courage. God, we thank you right now, God, that you have made us to be living ripple effectors of the earth. I thank you in the name of Jesus that you have given us a call to boldness. Thank you so much, God, that you want us to commit to building others up. You want us to embrace boldness. God, we thank you that you want us to be unstoppable women. And in order to do that, we ask right now that you will break and release Every ounce of shame, every ounce of guilt, every ounce of doubt, every ounce of fear, anything that may paralyze from walking, paralyze us from walking into our calling, God. We release in the name of Jesus timidity. We release right now regrets in the name of Jesus. And we ask right now that you will make clear, God, in the name of Jesus, our next steps, God, that you would guide us, that you would be a limb to our feet and a light to our path, God. And even though we walk through the shadows of death, God, we ask right now that you would be with us. Help us to guard our tongues. Help us to guard our minds, God. Help us to guard our hearts. Help us to walk in your righteousness and your love, God. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for believing in us. We thank you so much, God, that you have chosen us God that we are your daughters that you believe in God and we thank you right now that you will get to get the glory in the name of Jesus you will get the glory in the name of Jesus and we pray supernatural courage in Jesus name we pray amen all right listen I hope um I hope this has blessed you if you want to purchase this devotional and go through it with me there's a link um, in the description. Okay. So if you are on your phone, there's like a down arrow underneath the video on the right. And when you hit that down arrow, that is a description box where there's a lot of links and all that kind of stuff in there. I'm also going to link my sister's podcast just in case you want to listen to that as well, but definitely get the devotional so you can follow along. But I'm telling you, this has been blessing me. It snatches my edges more than I can express. So Again, I hope that you have been enjoying it. Um, and these videos are raw unedited because if I have to edit them, they won't get posted. So I hope that's okay too. But anyway, I love you. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you already subscribed. But it just helps me move up on YouTube. And I feel like these are the things that us as women, we, we really need to see on YouTube. Okay? 
These are things that needs to magnify in the world. We just need real conversations, real processing through what the Lord is giving us because he be taking us. He be taking us there. And sometimes it ain't always overly spiritual. Sometimes it's in the natural where you mad, you upset with God. You know, those feelings are real. And so I just want to um, I want to have that ripple effect from these conversations. So definitely subscribe. If you're not subscribed, go and log in and hit the button child. But if you are, hit the like button, the thumbs up button, and I would really, really appreciate it. So I'll talk to you soon for the next day inside of the 100 days of Believing Bigger.